also note the principle which we call one foot on the ground. There's one fire team firing while the other is moving at all times. This keeps the enemy's head down and keeps the enemy suppressed.
section commander goes around and physically checks that each one of his soldiers is okay, and also and also ensures that their arcs are all tied together, thus ensuring that the section has complete all-round protection. At the same time, the 2IC crawls around each man and checks their, ca their ammunition state. <coughs> around the casualty, to make sure there's no more enemy can find them, attack them or anything else like that. Once they're happy there's no enemy in the area, you're going to start with a master drill and check if they are under effective enemy fire, which surrounds landing near or around them for any pleasure as it is. Clear. Great, good. Next thing we're going to control the incident using the ammonic act. Assess, communicate, triage. First thing they're going to see how many casualties there are, look for any IEDs or anything like that. Meanwhile, Bancroft's going to be looking around the area, keeping secure. Once Hines is happy, he's going to communicate to the team commander. He's going to tell them where he is and how many times he's So this is Junior Soldier Hines, one male casualty, sustaining an injury to the left arm below the elbow. The bone is protruding from the skin and there is bleeding. We're at the reference point 30114395. Say again, 30114395. Over. <coughs> okay, this thing that would be done is a triage, which is where you put casualties in priority to be treated. But since there's only one casualty, this isn't necessary. The next thing he's going to move on to is injured soldier. First, he's going to check for catastrophic bleeding. There's a lot of blood there. Catastrophic bleeding is when the artery has been damaged. Where the blood would literally be squirting out the wounds. This isn't happening, so there's no catastrophic bleeding. <coughs> next thing, he's going to shake and shout to check for any response. He was making a lot of noise, there's been a lot of damage done, he's broken his arm, so he has response. Next thing you're going to check for breathing. So if you was talking and making noise, you can breathe, that's fine. And next thing, he's going to do a top of the throat check for any more bleeding, breaks or burns. <laughs> Looking for bruising, swelling or dark patches of soil. Okay. He's going to move on to drill five, which is bleeding. Hines is going to take field dressing out of his dwelling, which will then pack around the wound, taking care not to disturb the bone shooting from the skin as if it pushes it back in, it will only cause further damage. Okay, Hines made a hole in the field dressing, which the bone can be placed through to keep it packed and secure. After doing this, what Hines would do is make some morphine to the casualty. I'm not going to do this now, but what the situation would be, we take out the injector, place it in the left thigh, with the fleshy part of the body, where morphine's going to get on the bloodstream quickly, inject it for 10 seconds, then take the needle out, snap it off, and dispose it properly. Once Hines has secured the bandage on the wound, he'll then try and immobilise the wound. Then, what he'll do here is, get the arm, and he'll place it in a kind of area on the jacket, which is the rank side here, or on the strap on the webbing, keep the arm in place, stop any further damage occurring. Once he's applied the bandage, you can do that quickly. Through the wrong side, keeping the arm secure. What he'll do now is try and stop and uh, you're going into shock, keep talking to him, keeping him warm, and making sure he stays conscious and comfortable. What he'll do then is call for a medivac, tell them how many questions there are, what they've done so far, and where they are. Any questions on drill six? No? Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching 25 to 2.